Hello, welcome to the program. If you live along the U.S.-Mexican border, or anywhere in Texas for that matter, you're probably concerned about the shootings, murders, violence, and lastly, now the riots and demonstrations that have broken out along the Mexican side of the U.S.-Mexican border on the southern side of the Rio Grande River. In this case, closing international bridges, shutting down the import-export commerce between the number one trading partner of Texas, that being the country of Mexico. Law enforcement officials on this side of the border, what are they doing? Are they ready? Are they ready in case these rioters leave the Mexican side of the bridge and move over into the U.S., Texas, and border side of the border? We're going to try and find that out on the program today, so stay with us. We're going to kind of give you an update on where a street cop, a Homeland Security chief, and a border congressman are on this issue. We're going to get them to weigh in for you on the program. In the studio in particular, Cameron County Chief of Homeland Security, the director of that organization, Johnny Cavazos. Johnny, thank you for joining us here in the studio. In the field, Laredo McAllen Congressman Henry Cuellar telling us about his visit with the President of Mexico on the problem along the border and West Laco Police Department Captain Raul Vallejo, Raul Vallejo, and he has quite an interesting story, Johnny, because he in fact has pushed his community, the city of West Laco, and his police department to go out and get some armored personnel vehicles and that kind of thing and be ready in case the Progressive International Bridge is ever attacked in any way on the U.S. side, especially to protect his law enforcement officers and SWAT team members when and if they have to go to that particular bridge and secure it for the nation and for the security and import and export business that Kratt crosses on that particular border. Now, the U.S. is ready to aid Mexico in the drug fight. That's the story on BBC because Defense Secretary Robert Gates has said that the U.S. wants to increase military assistance it provides to Mexico for its fight against drug trafficking on the border. More than 1,000 people have been killed so far in 2009, and Defense Secretary Gates has said that aid could come in the form of military hardware, training, intelligence support to help the Mexican authorities in particular in their fight against the well-armed and organized drug traffickers. His comments somewhat aimed to defuse the diplomatic row which ensued between the U.S. and Mexico after the publication of a U.S. Pentagon report which said that the drug-related violence could turn Mexico into a failed state and actually equated Mexico with the country of Pakistan as two of the most unstable countries in the world, with one of those being in our southern border, Johnny. That's somewhat scary to think about in retrospect. We're going to get your comments on it, but first of all, we want to go to uh, the Laredo McAllen Congressman Henry Cuellar and what he told B following his visit with the president of Mexico. Well, first of all, you know, one of the first things we got to see was a cachet of uh, arms, uh, powerful automatic weapons, uh, grenade launchers. It was an amazing uh, type of weapons that they had just, you know, captured. All, all that come from the United States. Uh, from the U.S. It, it, but, you know, some of them were made in China, some in uh, Bulgaria, but all came in through the United States. In fact, about 90 percent of all the guns that they get in Mexico when they're confiscated, are, are, are they originate from the U.S. They asked us, we asked them, what's the most important thing we can help you with right now? And they said, stop the uh, the flow of arms, this river of lead that's coming in, this river of arms are coming in. Uh, in fact, in the stimulus package, by coincidence, we just happened to put in $10 million to hire more additional ATF officers for the border, which means that in the McAllen area, Laredo, and other places along the border, we're going to hire more ATF officers so they can focus on the uh, flow of arms. Uh, that's what they want us to do, uh, work on. we got to make sure that they uh, are able to, to win this war against the drug cartels. Now, in the BBC report, it indicates that Mr. Calderon, president of Mexico, rejected the Pentagon's findings and said the authorities in Mexico were very much in control of their country. The Homeland Security Chief for the Governor of Texas, Steve McCraw, says that uh, there is no indications of a collapse in Mexico. Uh, there would have to be a loss of continuity in government. And so the governor of Texas and his Homeland Security Chief has indicated that he, in, under no circumstances, 
thinks that the government of Mexico is getting ready to collapse anytime soon. I've not seen any any thing substantial that would uh, indicate that that is the case. I, I do believe that um, the governor's office, his division of, of Homeland Security, has been on top of this. I have not seen any uh, reports that would indicate that the, that the government of Mexico is on the verge of a collapse. Steve McCraw did tell the Rear Grand Guardian in a story you can go to reargrandguardian.com and uh, look up that particular story we're making reference to at this particular moment. He did tell a committee for the House in the state capitol in Austin, as quoted by the Guardian, we do expect that the violence will get somewhat worse in Mexico before it does get better. But again, he says that he does not think, he being Steve McCraw, that he does not think that the government of Mexico is going to be collapsing. Uh, I, I think he's correct. I think that we have seen an increase in, uh, in violence along uh, you know, the U.S.-Mexican border, uh, not, not on the U.S. side so much as on the Mexican side. But um, as far as uh, the collapse of the Mexican government, I've, I've not seen any information that would lead me to believe that that is uh, on the verge of happening. Now, McCraw did, Johnny, indicate to this committee who he was appearing before at the state capitol, the House Committee on Border and Intergovernmental Affairs in particular, that absolutely there has been violence in Mexico that has spilled over across the U.S. border into uh, the United States from Mexico. That would be across the Rio Grande, of course, and there's no question about it. He does say that that violence has moved over. Have you seen movement of some violence moving into your county, Cameron County, just like it has in Laredo and Nuevo Laredo, Juarez, El Paso? I don't think that the level of violence is, uh, in, in Cameron County, anyways, is anywhere near uh, it is in, in those other counties that you just mentioned. Um, however, I can tell you that the sheriff of Cameron County and the law enforcement agencies within Cameron County have been in, uh, meeting with state and federal law enforcement officials to go over the contingency plans. And I think that uh, we have a very good plan. I think that if we were to see a spillover, that we'd be prepared for it. Um, I cannot speak for the other counties, but uh, I don't think that we have received um, as much attention or as much uh, violence in, in um, our neck of the woods as they have in other parts of uh, Texas Mexican border. Steve McCraw, Director of Homeland Security for the state of Texas, directly related to and in the governor's office, Rick Perry in particular, said that his office and the governor's office has plans underway to address any possible spillover in the form of a state contingency plan should the violence in Mexico show up in the Lone Star state of Texas. He said that's what the people of Texas expect, Johnny. Do you have a contingency plan in particular for your county? Absolutely, there is a contingency plans in Cameron County, and the sheriff of this county and is... And you brought uh, it with you, by the way. Actually, we have uh, plans right here. We've got contingency, contingency plans for uh, just about any uh, man-made or... Uh, Move on over, and I'll start reading from it, and we'll, oh. and we'll have another three or four hours of program. Absolutely. There's two, <laughs> there's two binders just like this one here. There, it's, uh, it's a comprehensive plan for just... It's an all-hazards plan. It, uh, anything from tornadoes and uh, wildland fires and, and, and hurricanes, hurricanes. to, to man-made um, uh, disasters such as uh, terrorism or civil unrest. All those are addressed in our plan. In addition to this, our... And a scenario and a contingency plan is just that. You take an idea, a concept, this could potentially happen. You've got a refinery in Reynosa. That refinery has a meltdown for whatever reason. Uh, it does catch fire, as has happened during my lifetime when I was a fireman. Went over there, fought the fire, downwind from McAllen. Those things could be an impact on a down, uh, upwind community, such as, in this case, McAllen from the P Manx refinery in Reynosa. Absolutely. And when we have such a, a facility in Matamoros that we, we monitor uh, closely. Um, but uh, the, these contingency plans that we have, um, they're not just bound in a, in a document. We actually drill these uh, plans and these are the plans that we use when we stand up our emergency operations center. But in addition to these plans, we have our county sheriff who has been having meetings here recently with uh, federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies and to go over those uh, contingency plans and to make sure that the citizens of this county are protected if we were to have such a scenario. People of your county people of our county, yes. In particular, has some of this planning and some of the reaction 
been totally part and parcel and related to the fact that there have been these occurrences, these riots, the civil unrest that has occurred across the border, Reynosa, Far, so forth, those other bridges where this, this reality has suddenly become something that you're aware of because it's now something that's happened. It's not a scenario any longer. It's something that has taken place. And there is some fear that's occurring on the uh, U.S. side with the people who are somewhat, uh, somewhat aware of the fact that this has happened and now they become somewhat paranoid. So well, we're gonna, let's, take the, let's take the people also to the Reynosa situation, looking at some of the uh, things that occurred there. And what are you seeing on the screen well, that you've also seen? There's the city of Hidalgo. Here we have the Department. Hidalgo County Bridge uh, uh, where we have long lines um, and we have uh, quite a few people trying to cross the International Bridge and being uh, held up by law enforcement officials. Um, you see a huge presence there of uh, military. We have uh, some folks there who are not too pleased uh, with the law enforcement and the military presence. They want them there. to leave. They want, them, they want them gone, yes. Now, there was one reporter for a Mexican TV station that himself was had his life in danger, also that of his photog lying on the bridge between Reynosa and the city of Hidalgo slash McAllen. You can hear the shots firing. We're going to let you kind of listen to those shots being fired so you can really get a feel for what transpired there in Reynosa, Hidalgo slash McAllen. <laughs> Es un enfrentamiento entre fuerzas federales y delincuencia organizada. Pretty scary to think about being a reporter or being anyone involved with that situation over in Reynosa. I can just imagine what uh, must have been going through his mind when he was uh, probably laying uh, face down on yeah. the sidewalk uh, when all those shots were being fired at uh, across the street from where he was. So what should the audience, those of us like you and myself, who have spent a lifetime going to Mexico, dining there, shopping there, feeling totally at ease and totally safe when going to our neighboring country, the country of Mexico? Well, I, Should we be you, more fearful you know, now? I don't think we should be more fearful. I think that we should use common sense. I think that we should keep our eyes and our ears open. Be careful of where we go. I know we've got this, I've got this old saying, if you don't want to get into a bar fight, stay out of a bar. If you're going to be looking for, if you're going to go across the river and be, you know, looking for narcotics or looking for trouble, then you're going to find it. But if uh, you stay in the, in the uh, uh, tourist areas, if, I mean, there's nothing wrong with, with going over there and continuing your, 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 your shopping and your, your dining as you have done in the past. I think that we should use common sense. I think that we should keep, um, uh, calm if something were to happen, not go into a panic situation. And uh, uh, I think that the commerce between Mexico and the United States is vital to our part of the world. I think it needs to continue. I don't think we need to panic. Violence in Mexico, is it going to creep across the border into the Lone Star State? Problem as it exists has been some of the violence that occurred by virtue of civil unrest and some riots that occurred on the Mexican side of the border. Is that an indication by virtue of the fact, Johnny, that there were more than one riot going on simultaneously, that it was in fact planned by someone other than those protesters, perhaps? Well, that, that is a possibility, uh, Ron, that uh, it could have been organized. There's no indication of that uh, at this point in time, but th that is a possibility. The President of the United States has sent $720 million to upgrade land ports, $160 million for Customs and Border Protection and Systems and Radios, in particular $100 million to expedite border barrier technology, $10 million to prevent gun running into Mexico from the United States. So that is important because those dollars are coming to the border region along with the $27 million that has been requested over and above what Texas Governor Rick Perry requested in the 2007 uh, legislative session in Austin. So those additional dollars coming to the region of the Texas border with Mexico, and in particular, one thing that might be used is to get additional equipment. One of those pieces of equipment has been arranged and bought and purchased by the city of Westlaco, Texas, in order to help protect its 
bridge between Progreso and Nuevo Progreso, Las Flores, Mexico. The commander of that particular department, Captain Raul Vallejo, he spearheaded that purchase, and we talked to him in front of his APC there in the city of Westlaco. How long ago did you acquire this particular piece of equipment and why? Uh, we acquired it, um, I'm going to say about two years ago. Uh, we've slowly been working on it uh, mechanically and stuff like that. It's a good piece of equipment to have it, in handy, you know, it's a handy piece of equipment. Had the disturbance and violence on the other side and the other bridges on the Mexican side of the uh, Rio Grande Valley bridges, had it gotten out of hand and come to the Progreso Bridge, uh, this particular piece of equipment could have come in handy for your SWAT teams out in the West Coast PD? Y yes, sir. Most definitely. In what way? How would you have used it? Well, in occasions where we have to rescue somebody from uh, incoming ground fire, we can place a vehicle between us and the uh, gunmen so we can retrieve whoever's pinned down. As far as you know, you're the only community along the border from Brazil to El Paso that has military armored equipment. Uh, do you think it's a good idea for the other communities who uh, do front on the Rio Grande to consider doing the same? Well, I mean, I, I don't know their, each city's particular situation, but uh, you can't always be too, too prepared for what you don't know is coming. So I, w I would certainly be prepared for as much as I could. So, Johnny, we just saw the captain from the West Coast Police Department standing in front of his APC, armed personnel carrier in particular, uh, very proud of it. He drove it, as he explained <laughs> during our interview while he was in the military, so he's well-versed in doing that. Is this something that most law enforcement along the border needs to consider, such as your own self and your own county and acquiring and maybe using some of this stimulus money from the President of the United States or the Governor of Texas? Well, absolutely. I think our, our SWAT teams, uh, be it the, ca the county level and the city level, need to be properly equipped. And part of what I do as a Homeland Security, as far as emergency management, is try to acquire uh, funding uh, in order to, in state and federal funding, in order to purchase this type of equipment. Or if we cannot purchase it, we can uh, lease it, uh, similar to uh, the equipment that you and I saw earlier today. So I yeah, think the it audience is, is seeing that now, seeing you taking over that armored, these former British vehicles that have been uh, brought to South Texas. And these, this is a type. This is a type of equipment that uh, could very well be used in case we were to have uh, such a s scenario. Some local uh, law enforcement agencies and, and uh, at the state and the federal uh, agencies that are here in the valley already have similar equipment, but not every jurisdiction has this type of equipment. I think it is important that. Um, that we, um, in our plans and, and in our future purchases, that we, we look at this type of equipment to uh, better assist and to protect uh, not only the SWAT team members or the, the uh, tactical officers, but, I mean, we have to remember what this equipment is for, and that's to protect the public from any harm. Now, we really truly cannot expect the U.S. military to show up at our border and start shooting over into Mexico. That's something that the military just cannot do. Uh, Fall can back on law enforcement. Uh, uh, and exactly. On your shoulders. It is going to go back on the local law enforcement officials to be able to, to be um, trained and have the necessary equipment in order to protect the border. The, uh, the military, and you're absolutely correct, uh, no one could be shooting across the border, and, and we don't expect that to, to happen. So. Now, going back to the story written by Lynn Brzozowski, of the San Antonio Express News that you can go to our website, runwhitlock.com, and see more about how to connect up with that particular story. According to the story, it says those who fought for the port bunny, in particular from the Obama administration, say that America cannot afford slowdowns in commerce that affect 7.1 million jobs along the U.S. and Canadian border. That's one of the reasons that your department, all law enforcement, cannot affect, cannot expect to permit these bridges and interconnect import-export between the number one trading partner of Texas, that being Mexico, and have anyone, protesters or otherwise, stop this bridge commerce for any length of time. Absolutely. The, uh, shutting down an international bridge is, is last resort. We don't want to do that. It's, these, these veins, these arteries of commerce are vital to both sides of the border. Uh, it, it takes a pretty serious um, 
offense, it takes a pretty ser serious scenario to get one of these bridges to be shut down. So that's not something that we want to do uh, every day. And, and it's, it's critical that that uh, the commerce keeps flowing, that, that the, the public in, in the valley, we have people that live on one side of the border or the other and they have family on the other side and they travel uh, back Same and forth. Right on the Wavell Array though. Exactly, every day. And uh, Paso what is? It's like going from uh, it's like going from one side of town to the other uh, for most people. So, so no, shutting down these international bridges is not something we want to do very often. Visitors still crossing to Mexico despite drug violence. Fearless at the border. That's the name on the picture that you see on the front page of the Valley Morning Star. And in particular, Johnny says that Rio Grande Valley natives like you and I, winter Texans, other visitors, folks in Laredo, to Nuevo Laredo, back and forth, they all continue to pour across the border, in particular from the valley into Nuevo Progreso, despite recent drug cartel violence in Reynosa and reports of violence in Matamoros. One resident, based on this story, written by Gabriel Saldana, Hardy's resident Mark Horta, 24 sipped Negra Modelo with beer with three of his friends in one of the strips plazas in Progreso. He said he felt confident and their ability, there being he and his three buddies, to escape any dangerous situation, Johnny. If something we went down, we would probably just take off running and hide until it's over, he says. It's quoted in the Valley Morning Star. We go sometime to Reynosa. It's not even that bad there. They have military, too. You just have to be careful. Kind of reinforcing what you said earlier in the program. If you don't go over there looking for trouble, just go over to drink a Modelo, maybe a margarita. Don't be looking for drugs and get involved with a bad element. You're not going to get hurt. Well, that's absolutely correct. If, you, if you're looking for trouble, you're going to find it. I think uh, we should just remember, don't leave your common sense at home. You know, take it with you. Um, keep your eyes and your ears open and, and go about your business. And I, there's no uh, reason to, to panic and, and to be overly concerned. I think that um, the law enforcement agencies, um, on this side of the border, on, actually on both sides, but particularly on our, I can only speak for our, our law enforcement agencies here on this side, are doing an outstanding job at making sure that our public is safe. Johnny, thank you for coming and being with us. Ron, thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thank you for coming and thank you for joining us here on Ron Whitlock Reports. Till next time, adios.